Welcome everybody to the Foundations Business Program. I am Michelle Turner from Entertainment Tonight. Before we talk to our guest today, uh, I want to let you know a couple of things. First of all, the foundation has set up a COVID relief fund in order to support thousands of union performers who are going through tough times. We all know that um, we're all just kind of one paycheck away a lot of times from, from hurt. Uh, since March, thanks to all the donations, the foundation has given over 6.1 million in emergency aid to more than 6,600 performers and their families. It's really a great thing. So if you're a sag after member and you need some help, please ask. If you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video and thank you all so much for your support. So now without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce who I can call my friend, <laughs> Mr. Lee Daniels. Hello, sir. Hello, Michelle. How you doing? I, you know what? I'm blessed and I'm here and I'm good. January is finally over. <laughs> Didn't that seem like the longest month ever, Lee? It was the longest month. <laughs> it's the longest year. <laughs> you can't write. You can't write it. I was going to say, could you even write? Could you write 2020? Could you make that <laughs> a movie? No. No. Um, you know, before we, we get going, because we're kind of doing Lee Daniels, This Is Your Life. Today. Is it? A is career, that yes. This Lee is Dan your life, Lee Daniels. This is your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's not often that, that we get to, and especially me as a, a host and a journalist, that I get to sit down and really kind of go over all of the highs, maybe some of the lows of a career and really get to go deep and pick your brain about what oh, you wow. were thinking at this moment, what you were feeling at this moment, what decisions you were able to make. And so this is really a joy for me because I, I am such a huge fan of your work and everything that you do. And I think your mind, the way your mind works is so interesting to me. So to be able to get and sit and kind of pick at your mind is, is really great. Um, you know, one thing I do want to mention up front is that we are doing this for SAG-AFTRA and in 2020, they did give you um, their patron award, which is for philanthropy. Um, and that also, you know, we see people's work and we know the good works that they do, but in life, the good works that you do really should be applauded as well. And so where did that giving spirit come from for you? Mm, my giving spirit came from uh, my mom. Mm. Oh, my mom is giving. My mom was giving. My grandma was giving. Mm -hmm. I just, it was, it's, it's really is better to give than receive, I think. I really do believe that. I think that I get, I get off on helping people. Mm -hmm. I get off on giving. My granny used to always say, we may not be able to change the world, but you damn sure better be working on your little corner of it and making sure it's the best place it can be. And she would always say, we're not put on, we're put on this earth to be servants and of service. Um, yeah. And then you do really get that back tenfold, I believe. And I think you, what, what you've experienced in your career is, is part and parcel to that. Like when you have a giving heart and a pure heart and give, you know, of yourself, you get that all back. Yeah. Back it's it's funny. I really, I think that uh, it's so corny. I didn't, you know, at 61, you don't know what that means. You, you, you hear it early on as a kid. It's yeah. better than to give than to receive. But when you are giving, it really is a buzz. You, yeah. you know that you're helping someone and uh, it's selfless. So it's good. 61 years young, by the way, Lee Daniels. There ain't no way on God's green earth that you're behind is 61. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 61. <laughs> oh my God. Well, when I was, when I, <laughs> you're like, woo. Well, that's okay. I'll be 46 in nine days. So we right there. You look great too. Well, see, yeah. there you go. It is true what they say. It really don't <laughs> nope. crack. Nope. <laughs> At all. <laughs> really don't. Um, so I want to go back to kind of when we first all um, were speaking the name Lee Daniels off our tongue. And that was in 2001 for Monsters Ball. Do, do you concur with that? I mean, you've been in the game since the 80s. Yeah. Um, but was that the first time where you felt like the masses really heard and, and were kind of getting your vision about the things you wanted to do in this industry? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think that that was, I was uh, managing actors. I was directing small theater. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, um, I never, I hadn't gone to film school. 
And so I didn't know what it meant to be a I didn't know what it meant to be a director. What does it mean? What does it mean to be a director? How does one direct? <laughs> so um, I uh, was managing actors and I managed an actor named Wes Bentley. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I and he was offered the role for Monsters Ball. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out at the last minute. So I called my friend Heath Ledger because the movie literally, I was producing the film. I was set to produce this film. I was gonna say, cause you, you weren't directing, you actually produced Lee Daniels Entertainment. It was a producer on this. Yes, I was the sole producer of this film, Monsters Ball. And, uh, and I wanted, but I was producing it for my actor to star in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting, you know, I mean, like it was the closest thing I could get to directing was, mm -hmm producing mm -hmm. and uh so um he pulled out he but uh, west pulled out mm -hmm. so i called heath because i was going to lose it already we had we had halle berry we had uh billy bob thornton those are the two anchors and mm -hmm. uh and i was going to lose it so i um i called heath i said heath you got to replace it because i think this movie's going to fall apart and and he did and that was that and then i was set off to the races for and really set the, i loved this the script because um it just you know at that time we were seeing specific types of black cinema mm -hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't they, they weren't uh to me they weren't um celebrating the complexities of the human condition of the black experience mm -hmm. Um, and so I love the complication, the complicated character of Letitia, Halle Berry's character, and Most Def's character, and Puffy's character. I just love, we don't see black people like that. Had never, mm -hmm. in my experience, uh, seen that type of, those type of characters on screen, all of which I knew these people, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that began that began the journey of of of, of Lee Daniels and and Hallie won the Oscar became the first black woman to win the Oscar which was first like first and crazy. only still for best actress. is he the first and only for best actress wow <laughs> that's crazy yeah you know when I was a kid I um, watched Lady Sings the Blues and I watched Diana Ross mm -hmm. uh, at the Oscars that was the first Oscars that I saw. And I saw her and Cicely Tyson together. And it was really, it was crazy. I don't know if we can get footage of that, but it was crazy. And I, I watched them and I watched them both lose to Liza Minnelli that year. And I uh, feel really great uh, that I had something to do with Hallie winning that award. Uh, yeah. that, that was crazy. Uh, That's crazy that it's nobody won since then too. There have been, there have been supporting actors that have won, but the best actress category, she's it. She's it wow. for a woman. So, um, you know, hopefully that can be this year, maybe a change with that. I mean, I, I think, you know, Viola Davis has a, a, a good shot of that for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I mean, people, you know, say this was Chadwick Boseman's film and in a lot of ways it was, but they're both lead characters in that film. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe people are buzzing about Zendaya and Malcolm and Marie, maybe that could happen. I don't, I, I don't know, but right now you have a definite hand in that. I, you know, I, I wanna kind of dig a little bit deeper into Monsters Ball because you're right. I think that uh, um, we hadn't seen the complexities of that on screen. And while I thought- it, I got a lot of flack for that, you know, that movie. I was, that's where I was going. It was so oh, I riveting. Don't, I, don't know, I don't know why I got a lot of flack for it either. You know, I just, uh, it was really interesting. I didn't, I didn't, and I, I think that the internet was just beginning at that time. I think that mm -hmm. you guys just could get on the internet and I saw the most nasty things about me. And uh, I couldn't figure out what the hell, we couldn't get, we didn't get a nomination for, we didn't even get a nomination for uh, the NAACP Image Award, which was really crazy. I just thought that she acted her ass off in it. She did. And I think the question, because sometimes it, it, it does become black and white for us a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? And, but I think the question that a lot of people had was, well, why does it have to be Halle Berry having sex with this white man to make her validated for an Oscar? 
And I don't think that has, I always wondered like why it came to you like that, because I don't think that has anything to do with you. I mean, I think that's the outside forces deciding what they're going to laud and get accolades to. But I think that was for a lot of people hard to kind of get past because um, it felt like, yes. Mm -hmm. That's in my impression. Um, I certainly didn't feel that way, but that's kind of, I think the conversation. What if a white woman was having sex with a black man and she got nominated? Like, and she won. Why is it that, you know, my next film was a movie called The Woodsman. Well, people would say that movie wouldn't be made in that same vein. That monster but, but, was but in my world, it would be. I did a movie called Shadow Boxer where Helen Mirren was having sex with Cuba Gooding Jr. Yep. In my world, anything is game. My world is a world that exists in real life. And whether or not people want to see it or whether they don't want to see it, that's their that's their prerogative, you know. So I guess that's what makes uh I guess that's what makes me controversial, I guess. I don't know. Um I wouldn't say controversial. I think that's why I said about your mind. I love the way it works because I think when most people zig, your mind zags. And I think that's what makes number one for interesting conversation, because that's what I like to come out of movies with. If I'm not watching Coming to America, which just makes me laugh, then I want to come out of a movie with conversation, um, differing thoughts, not wanting to to feel like everybody else felt in it so we can really have in-depth conversations. Monsters Ball did that. That's why I think the movie was such a critical success. And, And I don't know if you feel this way, but do you feel like, everyone has to love your work for you to be filled up? No, no, Mm -hmm. because I love my work. Is that crazy? I really love my work. I don't walk away from something not loving it. I absolutely loved Monsters Ball because I knew that woman. Mm -hmm. Like I knew that woman. And so I felt like I was giving voice to someone that never had a voice. Did you have a- We wanted to, as black people to see or hear that. Mm -hmm. I think that that gave voice to I mean, that's the body of my work. My body, the work I do gives face to faceless and gives voice to voiceless. You know, the next film I did was The Woodsman. Well, I'm sure you want to go back to Monsters Ball, but my mom- No, no, told, a, we, yeah, yeah, the next one you did is The Woodsman my, in, in my 2004. Mom, my mom told me after Monsters Ball, because I wanted Sam Jackson to play, uh, we were in conversations with Sam to play uh, the pedophile. Hmm. And my mom said, don't come home if you have that man playing that character, if you have Sam playing that character. And I was like, mom, why is it that, um, why do we have to be held at, why are we here? Why do we have to be so fucking perfect? We are human beings, we we need to, anyway, I wanted to come home. So I (laughs) asked Kevin Bacon in the role. (laughs) I cast Kevin Bacon in the role. And my mother was happy with that. But which at that point, that transformed Kevin Bacon for a lot of us as well, seeing him. Because, you know why? Because we, we, he was able to be seen in a different light. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is the beauty of um, what we as artists are able to do. We should be able to um, express the world that we live in. And for me to be, um, I won't be silenced mm-hmm. for, for stories that are important, I think, that are important to, I think, our culture, yeah, too. For sure. Do you go into most of your movies, when, and number one, do you have a hand in the casting? And do you go in usually, like, you know that there are certain people you see, and like, come hell or high water, you see them for this role? And have you ever been wrong? I've been wrong, but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I knew you, you make it happen. You work it out so you don't know that I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm wrong. Um, actors are in so important, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on SAG after SAG. Just actors, I I admire actors. I've uh, admired actors since uh, you know since watching. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf with Liz Taylor and Richard wow. Burton. I've just wow. admired actors for being for, it's hard. It's hard to bear your soul. And if you're really, really true in bearing yourself, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. That it's is the true. most beautiful thing in the world. You can, you can change the conversation. So being a part of being able to change the conversation is uh, an honor to me. 
Let's talk about Shadow Boxer because that was your direct. Uh-uh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that movie, Michelle? Yeah, I, Lee, I've seen all of your movies. You have? You're so funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but let's talk about that because you were just telling me how, um, you know, when it came to Monsters Ball and the, you, you didn't know anything about directing, you didn't even know how to do that. So how do you go in 2001 from not knowing a lick about yeah. to go well, in I, 2005 to directing your first movie? Right. I think that... Um, Mm. Well, you know, I come from theater, so I knew how to work with actors. Mm-hmm. So, and I would, you know, coach some of the actors in in, in some of those films that I produced, um, their performances, you, you know? And so, uh, and there was a trust there as, you know, both directors for Woodsman and Monsters Ball were white. And so there was a trust with the black actors that were that were there. Um, but I studied what the key grip did. I studied the job of the PA. I studied the job of the AD, the second AD. I really understood now, I understood what my cinematographer did. I understood what a gaffer did. So that by the time I was ready to to direct, I thought I had a handle on, a take on, um, on what it was like to be a film director. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. But uh, uh, that was a crazy, that was a crazy ass movie, man. The, uh, <laughs> that was a, uh, I'm glad you said it, cause it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. I, some, I, people, some people do love it, I have to say. I, I, um, I was, um, I was a little cocky then, you know, mm-hmm. I was, um, I was on drugs then mm-hmm. and I was an alcoholic then. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I had just come off of two critically acclaimed films, right. Woodsman, Monsters Ball. You mm-hmm. let somebody tell you that you're on, you're like, you're getting that type of acclaim and you're also fueled with, uh, addiction. Uh, you feel that you are, um, great. You can, you're ready to take it on. And I was not, I mean, I loved it. I, I, I'm happy with the film. I love the film, actually. I mean, I, I mean uh, actually, I don't love the film. <laughs> you don't. I haven't seen the film to love it or dislike. I just love the experience that I have. That's a better way to describe it. Wait, you did you just say you haven't seen the film? Uh, uh-uh. I haven't seen the film since I edited it, since I finished it. No. Really? <laughs> no. I can't see. I don't see any of my films, Michelle. Whoopi Goldberg says the same thing, and that blew me away. No, why? You don't see. No. No. I, when not? I experience it, because it's, uh, I, I'll look at it and I'll hate it, I'm sure. And, and it was such a magical experience making the film. Making the film is just beautiful. I'm working with people that I love. I'm working with people that I, I put it all together. Yeah. Every film I've done, I have put together, Michelle. Like I have put this, I have done the impossible. Putting a film together is an impossible task. <laughs> It, you have to will it into production. Unless a studio is saying, okay, we're gonna green light this, which is still hard. You know, if you are doing an independent film, it is willed into production. It is, it is, it's an act of God. A- am I correct? You were the first black producer to be nominated for an yeah, Oscar who's filmed? Yeah. Yes. So and you didn't go to the show that year. No, I didn't go. Well, did I go? I didn't. I did go to the Oscars. That I think I went. No, I don't. I thought I read you did not go. I don't think you weren't sure you deserved to be there. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Why? Why would you not? I didn't go. I did not go. I remember looking at Hallie on the uh, on the uh, TV. So I don't think I went. What? Why did you not feel like you deserved to be there? I don't know. I think that you know. It was at a time for me when um, it was just post AIDS and I had lost all of my friends to the virus. And so I think that that spiraled me into um, um, drugs. Yeah. And I think that the the whole thing with uh, the AIDS crises then spiraled me into a place of darkness and just unworthiness and, you know, and there, um, and you know, being a black man, being a gay black man, that time in Hollywood, I don't know of anybody that is 
that can say that they survived it or because I don't, I don't know of any, I don't have any friends that have lived that have lived that. Hearing you say They've this, um, hearing you say this and, and kind of hear me out here, like how you were in a dark place and you were going through these things. You can see that in those movies. Can you? Yeah, I think so. And not that it's bad, but I think you can, I think you can see that a bit in those movies. Like during I never that. felt embraced by Hollywood. You know, I never felt embraced by the world that, you know, the, um, I just never felt embraced by, this is a black man. I never felt embraced by as a producer, never wanting to, trying to get advice from other directors. I was mm -hmm. like, no. And, uh, and as a gay man, you know, cause I was really, I made it a point to, it was as important to me as my blackness is to be, cause I couldn't, I could hide the fact that I was gay, but I, if I chose not to, because that was as important to me as being black. And that made me really an outsider. And mm -hmm. so I think that that doubled down on it all. And I thought that, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then four years later, I mean, you, you, you did do Tennessee in 2008 after- Well, let's talk about Tennessee. Did you see Tennessee? No. You did know you what, that's the one I have not ah! seen. Gotcha. That's the okay. one I have not seen. So. It's, it's, I will though, you know, I'm gonna watch it after. Okay, so it's not a great film, but can I tell you, I think Mariah Carey is really good in a not great film. Mm. It's the only film that I, I, I fall, sort of fall asleep on of any of my films. Uh, I produced it, uh, but I got it made. You know yeah. how hard it is to get a movie made? I think it was a $12 million budget and we shot it in Arizona and it's, um, and Mariah is really good and her songs are really good. and. Uh, and that same financier, even though she lost money on that film, she doubled down on me with Precious because she believed- So you had the same financier that you did for Tennessee for, interesting. Yeah, she believed in me. And so uh, she financed uh, Precious. You know, I usually try when, when, when I know that movies come like kind of from an adaptation of a novel, I usually try to read the book first. I did not do that. <laughs> with Precious, and I'm glad that I didn't do that with Precious. Uh-huh. It's, um, it's, it's an amazing book. I've read it now, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I didn't read it beforehand. I usually try to read a book before I see a movie, like uh -huh. I did with A Time to Kill, I did with A Color Purple, I did the, you know, these, and I'm glad that I did. I didn't do that here, and I'm glad that I didn't do that. Um, that movie still sits with me, Lee. Yeah. It you still know, sits with me. That book, Precious, Bush, mm -hmm. Push. I had a book called Push and a book called Iced. And those two books sat on each side of my bedside and they got me sober. Um, mm. and so I, uh, and so I, uh, when she said, what movie do you want to do next? I literally was like, ah, Push, Iced, Iced. And by the way, if you haven't read Iced, you should read it. It's really great. It's by Ray Shell. It's a great book. It's incredible. It's as good as uh, Precious. But, um, yeah, that book. Talk me, talk me through this process because um, you gobsmacked everybody with this movie um, mm -hmm. and finding Gabby Sidibe, who I can't imagine anybody else could ever play that role. Mm -hmm. um, and Monique, who ripped our hearts out and like put us mm -hmm. back together at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and Mariah, who I think I've said this to you before, I remember after that, her saying, Lee is the only person I'll ever get ugly for <laughs> in a movie. He's the only person that can bring that out. Um, you know, and I think about that cast and Lenny Kravitz, and when it just, it was so profound, it was so heartbreaking. Um, it was also this survivor story. And, you know, it, take me back to when you said you decided you wanted to do this and where did you go from there? Did you think, okay, I'm just gonna cast this wide open? Did you want someone new for Precious? Did you think about getting somebody that Hollywood already knew of? Like, where was your head at then? Okay, first, I don't. I I think that Ali Sheedy's mom, I forget her name, uh, had a had a, a lit agency, and she gave me the book. Hmm. And uh, and I was blown away. I couldn't believe the, I could not believe what I would, I mean, right? Yeah. The book is out well, The movie had to prepare me a little bit for the book. That's why I'm saying <laughs> I'm glad I didn't read the book before because the movie is heartbroken as you were. When you read the book, you're in a corner somewhere on the ground curled up. 
I understood the book uh, so well. It, I just, uh, I appreciated the book. I'd known so many preciouses. Mm. It spoke to my, it spoke to my youth. It just spoke to everything about me. And, uh, uh, and uh, I was so happy that uh, Sarah Siegel Magnus wanted to finance the film. She was great, especially after losing money on Tennessee. I mean, she lost 12 million on Tennessee. She was like, come on, I'm ready to rock and roll again. I was like, okay, double down. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so we hired a writer to adapt it, Jeffrey Fletcher. He became the first African-American to win an Academy Award for writing, mm -hmm. which was really great, really exciting. And, um, and uh, we, I, the search was on. I talked to Jennifer Hudson. I wanted Jennifer Hudson. At the time, Jennifer was sort of hefty. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Jennifer to, I remember running into her at the National Board of Review and asking her, does she want to play it? And I don't think she, I think she just didn't want to, she was losing weight, not gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, she didn't really want to. And, uh, but that's the only person that I offered the role to. I auditioned Taraji P. Henson. Taraji came in, she met with me. Oh, that was my first time. I, listen, Taraji came in, she met with me. And I said, uh, I, but I was, I wanted her to play, play Miss Rain. Okay. And uh, she said, I want to play, Precious. And I go, what? She says, I want to play Precious. And I said, you're a gangster. <laughs> you are a gangster. I will be seeing you soon. <laughs> Not for this, but you are a gangster. <laughs> so, uh, so that, <laughs> but um, the casting process was really interesting. Um, I, one of the girls that I auditioned is actually in uh, United States versus Billie Holiday, uh, Divine Joy. She she's everything. She's she? everything. So wait, so she did not tell me until I was on the, until we were working um, that she auditioned for uh, Precious. She said, "Do you remember me?" She said, "Do you remember me?" I don't know. She said, "I mean, I knew, I know you. I put you in cup. I put you in pound cake in, in yeah. Empire second season I, when Cookie went to jail." And she says, "No, that was my big one, but." We met before that. We, I auditioned for Precious. And I go, huh? She said, yeah. She says, but what's Gabby? I heard Gabby in there. I knew it was a rap. <laughs> so that was that was crazy. Um, but yeah, it was a really hard, it was a hard and arduous uh, casting process to find that character. Mm -hmm. And I instinctively knew that I had to have a my casting, because I uh, we didn't talk about my casting, but I used to cast also. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to have um, Gabby surrounded by some names, so I just start, you know I call it uh, you know friends to to, mm -hmm. to 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 help me out there. Helen Marin was supposed to play Mariah's part, but she couldn't do it. She had, something happened at the last minute, so I called Mariah. I said, "Helen can't do this. We're shooting in two days. You got to come in." Pretty much, that's how that happened. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, isn't that crazy? Yes. <laughs> yes. And ironically, that was a one of the few books that Mariah was obsessed with. She was obsessed <laughs> with that book. And uh, so she knew it and was excited about it. And, um, and Monique, you know, Monique, I had worked with on Shadowboxer and she was so fantastic in- I was gonna um, say, did she, did she audition or did you go to her and say, this is you? Yeah. No, because I, I know the art, I know the work, I know the actor, I know the spirit. So I knew- Yeah, but I we hadn't seen her like that. We hadn't seen yeah. that. Well, if you watched Shadowboxer a little bit, if you, you sort of saw that she was into some, she was, she had her thing going. She had her, it, you know what it is? Good performances come from it's almost like making love, Michelle. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like a tango with the director. If you are in sync with your, if you're in sync with your actor or your actress, um, you ain't even got to talk to them. Yeah. You're just looking at them and you're grunting and you're just like, you know, you're not. And we're on the same syllable, not mm -hmm. word, not page. We're on the same syllable. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened when we were with, uh, when I was with uh, Monique and Gabby. Uh, and Andra, mm -hmm. yeah. 
and Nicole, all of them. You know, if, we, yeah. if, we, if we're rocking, then we're, we're doing our thing. Uh, so, so tell me what that moment was when Gabby, when Gabby came in the room mm-hmm. and, and auditioned. Did you automatically say, I don't need to see anybody else? Um, I saw Gabby's audition tape and I knew that she was the, there was no question about it, that she understood this character on a primal level. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I became very protective of her uh, during the process, very protective of her. We were shooting um, that movie and there was a white girl that, was, um, uh, that she would pretend to be when she looked in the mirror. And that girl came on the set for one day and the crew and the, everybody, everybody was falling all over themselves for this girl. And Gabby was the star of the movie and she was ignored, she was ignored on the set pretty much by everyone. And it was so funny how that one girl came on. She was an extra, I, I, not an extra, I mean, in a bad way, but she was a, you know, she was a day player and she yeah. was treated better than, she was treated better than Gabby. So Gabby understood this character in a, on a primal level. And it was just, and it was, uh, and, and, and she jumped off the cliff with me. You know, she really believed in me. She trusted me. I think that part of, I get often asked why, how do you get these performances out of people? What do you, what do you do? How do you get these performances out of people over and over again? And I think that it's really a matter of trust, Michelle. Like I don't, I don't have any problem telling people about my past, about how I'm feeling right now, about um, I live in the I live in the truth. Tomorrow is not promised. Our next breath isn't promised. So I can only live in the moment right now of how I'm feeling in this moment and share that moment with the actors. And so when I am uh, vulnerable mm-hmm. and I tell them I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm doing. I know that when God says it's right, it's going to be right. Help me make this right. I think it. I think it. I think it makes them really relaxed and trusting in 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 um in knowing that that we're in it as a team to win it. Do you think that that was you know what people saw you do with Gabby and Monique in Precious? Do you think that was a jumping off to the to the trust? Because when you said that, like you know, there are two scenes in your movies that I that just. I mean, they still make my mouth hang open because I've never seen the Nicole Kidman and Zac Efron in the paper boy, like that scene, you know what scene I'm talking about with Which them. Oh, and, yeah. then, uh, and then Oprah and Terrence in the butler, like mm-hmm. those two actresses, Nicole Kidman, Oprah Winfrey, I've never seen them like do that before. And in their really, pretty much <laughs> since, I mean, they've been great, but pretty much since like Nicole Kidman, knocked my ass out in that movie. And I know people that was a, you know, people were like, you know, middle of the road. I thought she was. I don't think anybody questioned her performance. I think they questioned the act of who is this, who is this? uh, I believe that if if, if Paperboy were directed by a French director or a Mm -hmm. white Spanish cat, that it would be cool. But I think that people expect from me the lens of, someone that is uh, a black a black lens. They don't expect Look at that. your body of work. Yes, they get a black lens. They're not getting a black lens. They're gonna get, they still get a little bit of, um, I don't know, they, you know, the work that I, I the filmmakers that, that uh, have inspired me have been sort of like Pedro Almodovar or yeah. European, a lot of European, a lot of Spike Lee. So a lot of Spike Lee, John Waters, early John Waters, uh, 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 Female Trouble and Pink Flamingo. So I think that it's a, it's a, it's all over. It's, 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 it's that is me. Um, yeah. So um, that's. But your thing. body of work isn't that. That's what I was like saying. Your body of work is not through, like a quote unquote black lens. I don't no. see any of your movies like that. You don't. Not even your movies with predominantly black cast. No, not even the Butler. I don't see it. Like I really don't. I see it. Well, what is the? I guess what's the black lens then? <laughs> what is, what is I mean, the you're black, black, so of course you look into black. But okay. I look at that as you know, like I don't know. I just see. I see a collective experience in your movies. I don't. I don't really. I never have looked at them like that. Yeah. Um, did Did you? What did you think of the Paperboy? What did you think of that as a, as a uh-huh. whole? 
I, no. I really did, uh, Lee. I you know, really so many, can I tell you something, Michelle? So many of the directors that I respect years later and still now, they come up to me and tell me it's their favorite film. It's so good. So many of the actors, so many of the actors that I have, that I truly respect and mm -hmm. filmmakers have told me it's their, it's a brave and, and daring film. And I don't think that, uh, I think it was, I think I am a little bit ahead of my time when it comes to, you know, telling stories and, um, and, and, um, and I'm okay with that. Cause the movie what? lives on, the movie lives on. Yeah. Do you think that maybe like the masses didn't take to it like a precious because of what you just did with precious that film and then what followed was so completely like you yeah. know different yeah. and, and what you know mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure I always wondered why. Well, I think you're absolutely I was, right. I think that they wanted a continuation of precious or something like that and not really understanding. Look at my first film prior to that and you'll see Shadow Boxer and you'll see there's a there's a through line of mm -hmm. of um, abnormality in storytelling. <laughs> right. There, um, so so with Precious too, you know, most people, if you get a, a nomination for your film, people are over the moon. This movie got six nominations. Did it? It got six Oscar nominations. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I thought it was nine. Oh, well, let me no, know. I, but I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm just joking. I'm playing. It sounded good, though, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. But at, at that, you know, I, I remember seeing um, you you all on Oprah. And, I, you know, and it was like really cheerleading this film as, you know, the little movie that could and that did. And, and you know, so many people I felt like really wrap their arms around this film and willed it to be as great as it was destined to be. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what happened. And I think that, uh, you know, I think that uh, that's what I think happened. I think yeah. Oprah really helped me and Tyler Perry too, both of them mm -hmm. were really instrumental in making that uh, film uh, celebrated the way it was. And it made me feel really good. Cause I don't think many people would have seen it had they not, had they not, um, touted it like that. I love the power of the collective unit. So so we did talk about The Paperboy. That was in 2012. Well, The Paperboy was such that I was trying to, I was going to work on a film called Selma. I was going to direct Selma. And, and um, but you know, the when I found out what I found out about King, my interpretation of Selma was not going to be, um, I just, I had my own interpretation of what I felt King was about. And um, and so I, I just, I, you know, I decided that it, I didn't want to end up with a bullet in the back of my head. Right. So, You're saying because the, of the person, his personal life, a lot of people stay away from that when yeah. they make movies about him. And that's not something you wanted to do. I, I figured, you know, I live in the truth. I want to tell the truth, Michelle. I really wanted to really tell him as a human being uh, that was, I love when you are flawed because then I really, really celebrate you. I, oh my God, I see so much of you in me. So I understand that I also can be a hero, which is really what's so great about Billie Holiday. I was really able to lean into her flaws to, so that people can see so much of themselves in Billie to celebrate her as the civil rights leader that she is. But you just felt like I can't go there with Dr. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. So while that was not happening, I uh, I got um, I, Pedro Almodovar wrote a script that um, he wrote that script, Paper uh, Paper Boy, and he was going to direct it, but he didn't have a he didn't have an understanding of the human of the of the um, of the English language yet. I don't think I was mm -hmm. told he sort of, and so I snatched it up did a pass on it and uh, and did my thing with it. And David uh, was in it too, David, David O. Mm -hmm. Oh, yellow O. Oh, yellow. <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. I, I don't know why I'm, why am I, I, I have to watch that movie to see, I, maybe I'll get up the courage to watch that film. I think you should, I think you should. I think you should have, listen, and we all, after this conversation, I know people are going to be like, I got to go back and watch this. I got to think about this. I got to go back, yeah. and, you know, and, and do that. Um, and I will be watching Tennessee, just so you know. Um, 
let's let's talk about the butler because I touched on it a little bit talking about um, Oprah and Terrence and the scenes. Like I, you really did put something on our minds when we saw Miss Winfrey. Like yes, boobs up, cigarette <laughs> like in a, a situation I, like. I, I, I put I posted something yesterday, the spirit, because I forgot her birthday, and I posted something yesterday. Um, I, the picture, you posted that photo. <laughs> and I realized, oh my God, not only almost 10 years, but that she was phenomenal. Like, phenomenal. And what happens again is, I think that we just, they see me for who I am. And it's it, it becomes really about, um, it just becomes about me telling the truth. Like, you know, you, you, you're you bad. You don't, you're, I don't like the scene. I don't like what you're doing to it. I don't think that actors, movie stars, celebrities, I don't think that people are used to hearing the truth. I was gonna say, what is that moment like when you have to tell Ms. Winfrey, like that wasn't right? That wasn't- Not fun, <laughs> fun. It's so much fun. Cause she just embraces, you know, she wants to be told that. Does she? Remember, okay. Oh my God, yeah, are you kidding? I think she's a great actor. I, you know, she, we would do, we did something, um, she was peeling potatoes, right? Uh -huh. Two scenes, one scene was cut completely from the butler. It was seen that she was doing, um, she had to do laundry and Cecil was coming in to tell her something. And she, she was doing laundry. And, and I was watching her do the laundry and she's putting the whites in the, in, in, in the colors together. She's putting the bleach in with the darks. <laughs> She's putting the, she's putting the, what well, I go, excuse me. And I'm, I said, have you done laundry before? And so she, and she goes, and she's whispering. I could see she was being, she, she, I could see that. I didn't know it was called shaming at the time. But I said, hold up, cut everybody. She doesn't know how to do the laundry. So just, let's just get rid of the scene. I don't have time. And it was. <laughs> I love it. It was the best. And, you know, and another time she was, uh, she was peeling potatoes, which made it into the scene. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know how to peel a potato. I go, are you joking me? Are you really wasting my Did time? Did you really expect Oprah to know how to do laundry and peel a potato? Learned how to peel a potato. <laughs> she learned how to peel a potato. It was great, it was great. I think that people love um, honesty and, and, um, and I think that uh, I'm known for it. So it's, it's great to... Uh, yeah. Was Forrest Whitaker always your Cecil? <laughs> well, I was, <laughs> do you know something I don't? Actually, I do know something. You do know something. Um, yeah, he was not, uh, no, he was not my first Cecil. My okay. first Cecil was Denzel. I was back and forth with Denzel uh, for quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so happy that, uh, that, that Forrest did it. He's so good in it. Fantastic. The quiet dignity that he has to put. Like, I always think that it's tougher for actors to play small. You know, anybody can do this and you better and run. But, but like, just to be that quiet throughout the whole, it be your film, but to be that quiet throughout yeah. the whole film, it, that is masterful to me. Mm -hmm. He was really good. And also, like we would just watch one president come in after another. John Cusack came in and it was, he was so vile to, uh, mm -hmm. he was so vile as Richard Nixon. He had, Cecil would hold his place place up and, with the martini on it, you know, with his hand in the back, however you're supposed to be doing it mm -hmm. as the butler. And John would have that man wait three minutes till his hand was trembling. Mm -hmm. He said, all right, give me the martini, Cecil. The poor hands was trembling. <laughs> Oh, it was great. It was a great, you know, one thing I didn't realize, Jane Fonda, Vanessa Redgrave, Robin Williams, uh, Melissa Leo. We had a big all-star cast. Again, that was an independent film because Hollywood was simply not ready to see that film. They had no studio wanted to finance that film. Michelle, it was a hard one. Well, you saw that come awards time. And, and, and I have to say the first time I remember, I was still at CNN at this time. And I remember having the entire cast on um, my platform at the SAG Awards that year. It was all of you, Oprah, Elijah. Um, Elijah! Oh, was it yeah, yeah, all of you all 
um, on with me and it was just after, you know, you didn't get um, an Oscar nomination and you didn't get the, the Golden Globe nominations that you should have. And I remember Oprah saying that day, we are here, we are celebrating today, but you never, it, but it, it, what I liked was it wasn't covered up that there was disappointment because you're right, this film deserved all yeah. the accolades. But I think that, here's the thing, I think that it's what God wants, Michelle. At first, you know, in the moment you're really, uh, and that was a very powerful lesson for me. Mm. That was a very powerful lesson, one, to believe in the whole awards game, to really believe that it, because at the end of the day, people think I do want to win. People think I want awards for it. They think that, oh my God, that movie that you won, I said, no, I didn't win anything. But no, you did. No, I didn't. It was precious. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. But they people, people really do. And I think that um, it, it changed my attitude about awards because I was so, I saw everybody, all the anchor people and everybody was saying we were getting the, you know, red carpet. Oh, you're getting, how's it feel? With, how's it feel when you get an Oscar nomination? I go, oh, I don't know. And then afterwards, like, how's it feel that you didn't get one? I said, no, you said I didn't get one. <laughs> I didn't say I was getting one. You know, how does it feel? It feels shitty. But I think that from at that moment, um, that moment with Butler, I realized that it's not about the, it's so not about the awards. It ain't about the awards. Yo, it ain't about the awards. Mm -hmm. It is so not about the awards. It is about the work. The work lives on forever. And um, and it's nice, of course, you know, if you get them, but really, really, um, it's beautiful. It's almost okay that you don't. It's almost that way the, it's, the pressure's off. You ain't gotta worry about nothing because you know your shit is good. Like I know my shit. I know it's, I feel so strong about the work that I do that, um, and I know the effect that it has on people. I know that people come up crying to me. They, you know, I, I know the effect that I have, my work has on people. So that is all that matters. I think the rest is all politics. It's whether or not I'm the flavor of the month. It is, it is politics. It's complete politics. You're, you're right. But I'm going to go ahead and be disappointed for you and call it for what it was, because I think that it was ridiculous um, that this movie wasn't lauded all the way through to the Oscar, to the Academy. Um, but, and yeah, I but hear it, you, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think that it's okay to know that you made a damn good film and to be disappointed in that. I yeah. think it's more than okay. Um, but here's, don't you think this is what I, I think it did? It, it led, it started the conversation. When you're, you know, when you're uh, ahead of the curve, you start conversations. That conversation started the, um, Oscar so white conversation. It did. Us. It did. Began the conversation. And I think that change happened because of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with it because to a bigger picture, we have so many black people in the academy now. It's crazy. It's crazy. And we still have a lot of work to do, but it's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> You know, a little bit of the talk around the way was, well, Lee was mad. Uh, and so then he, that's why he went and did TV. <laughs> is that uh, true? Maybe. Maybe. Really? I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that. Maybe. I, thought, I was going to say, I thought that was ridiculous. But you know, maybe. people will create a narrative however they want. Maybe. So that's not why you went and, and did TV uh, and started. No, it. I was broke. Let me tell you, I did Empire because I thought to myself, why am I beating myself up, you know, and I can't afford to put my kids through college mm. and I've gotten all these people awards and I'm getting all this movie and my kids and I was going to take out student loans and stuff. And I said, this is crazy. This is insanity. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. And so when um, Danny Strong, who also wrote the Butler mm. came to me with Empire, he was like, you know, we have another film. I go, no, I want to do, I want to do this as a movie, as a series, because I gotta pay the bills, so I, you know, so it really was that. And when, when I poured myself into that, damn man, I poured myself into that show. I did not know what I was doing. I had never done television before in my life. Didn't know, didn't want to do television. Okay, didn't always through my nose. I come from theater, Michelle. So even cinema was was a little lowbrow for me, you know. Um, 
Yeah, Denzel so, uh, Washington no desire to me do. in an interview once, whenever I want to get back to acting, I go back to the theater. <laughs> yeah. That's he, he says that all the time. Said that? Denzel Washington, whenever I want to get yeah. back to acting, I go back to the theater. Yeah. So um, the, 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 uh, the television, and, but that, that's another beast, you know, that's another muscle. Well, I mean, you changed the game with that show. And I don't know if you were meaning to, or if you were just meaning to make some fun, good television, but well, you created yeah. a lot of conversation and it was game changing in a lot of ways. I mean, the way people embraced Cookie Lions, like I know that, you know, has a lot to do with Taraji as well, but like she became a phenomenon mm -hmm. in like a landscape of television that was whitewashed in a lot of ways. Yeah. You or know, if you were a black they character. They told me, I, mean, they, they, wow. I thought that, you know, I, you know, I, we didn't get, you're right, we didn't get any awards for, uh, for Butler. I'm just thinking, I thought we got something. Maybe you were nominated we, for SAG as an ensemble. Right. Yeah. But I think after that, once that, that once, it, once, but I, I said, okay, check next. Let me go off and, and conquer something else. Let me do something else. Let me show you what I can do in TV. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I can do in TV. And so that, um, I think that I was determined to make a make to put my tent pole up in TV for for black for blackness because I felt that we you 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 discarded what the audiences with Butler said mm -hmm. the critics we didn't weren't even critically claimed the movie the Butler I don't think that people really you know I don't think they critically embraced the film either but actors know mm -hmm. actors actors know directors know artists know the work. And, well, um, it's a staple in our black house every year that we watch. So which one? The, the butler. I thought you was gonna say paper boy. <laughs> you know, wait, so that's but, a staple but, in my black house. I'm talking about <laughs> my mama's house. Right. <laughs> um, but no, with, with Empire, it was um I I didn't understand um you know what? I had a call, I do a lot of um work in politics getting mm -hmm. people out to vote. And I was really um, helpful in raising uh, funds for uh, the Democratic National Convention and Kamala. And, um, and so she called to thank me recently. And I said, I want you to do me a favor. You've got to embrace this. You've got to embrace this moment right now. Cause what you're doing for black women, what you're doing for women, mm -hmm. they help you embrace um, um, the unprecedentedness of, um, there's so many first times in my life, you know, with Halle Berry, with, uh, with um, my writer for um, Precious, it had never happened. Are you are you are you embracing this? Are you embracing the Butler's success, the, the the money that it made? Are you embracing Empire? Do you do you realize that you've changed the conversation? There wouldn't be a Black Panther if there wasn't an Empire. There just wouldn't be any of this Black stuff if there hadn't been if you hadn't changed the conversation. And um and she said no, that she had so much work to do. That she had so much work to do. And 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 um. I said, well, stop and do. Only for a minute, but stop and do. Because you don't, all I'm thinking about is that next job. I'm thinking about how, I'm, I'm, I think about my impoverished self in the projects. And I think about um, that it's all gonna stop tomorrow. And I don't think that I'm talented and I don't think that I'm worth it. I don't. And I think that that inspires me to get up the next morning to fight because it's all gonna go away tomorrow. Did Jamal come from you or were you, is that, was that part, were you writing yourself? Jamal, me. That was me. Yeah. Jamal was a very, uh, that was a painful thing to do too. But then you just like, you live in your, you gotta live it. You gotta live it because it, it was so healing for me. You know, it, I was able to see myself and so many other kids that were beaten by their parents because they were other. I, and, I, uh, that scene in the trying. trash can is still at the forefront of my mind. Like that is one of the most heartbreaking scenes I've ever seen on television. Yeah. Ever. I don't remember directing that, to be honest with you. My really? sister, I don't remember. My sister, sister, um, who I put as an extra in all of my films, mm -hmm. uh, she was also in Paperboy, Nicole Kidman's best friend. <laughs> In paper. Um, we gonna get paper boy. Paper boy is coming back to life. Everybody see paper boy. Everybody see paper boy. Um, uh, 
my sister directed that scene for me because mm -hmm. I could, when he was walking towards Terrence Har Howard with the heels, mm -hmm. I blacked out because it was too real. Yeah. It was a flashback to home. And, uh, and so she took over and, and taught the kid how to walk to, toward it. But you have to talk about stories that you know, otherwise they won't affect you. You mm -hmm. have to talk about stories that have, for me, things that have happened to me, things that I've seen. And I don't think that you, unless you witnessed death, you witnessed birth. Hmm. You've gone to dark places and to bright places. Are you able to, to, to tell stories? I just don't think that you're able to, uh, to make people feel. Well, you are going to make us all feel um, when we, when everyone gets to see the United States versus Billy Holiday. I, you know how over the moon I am about this film. And I can't believe that it took you this long to come back to the big screen. Um, I get emotional. Wow. In a way, in the, the way that you've done it. I, I, and I'm really angry at you that you don't watch these films because I've seen it three times already. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. And I'll probably see it three more uh, before, but it, I, I really want to, to know and believe that this movie spoke to your soul in a way because what you poured out on the screen, like I saw, you can see the love, um, in every single shot, even the toughest ones. Like I felt like there was just so much care taken with all the little bits and all the curves and edges, you know? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, that was the, this has been the hardest film, you know, to do for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's a hero. Mm -hmm. That woman is a hero. And I don't even know where to begin with it, Michelle. It's just such an emotional, uh, I'm like, I'm still sort of, um, I'm still sort of sore from it, from giving mm -hmm. birth. I'm mm -hmm. still sore from giving birth from it. It is uh, very close to me. I think it's, it's close to a lot of black people. Mm -hmm. I think we all understand it. And I think that um, the story is so, important. I think that she's an unsung hero. Mm -hmm. And I identify with her so much, you know, because of my sobriety. I identify with her. I understand we've seen so many great Black artists die because of, uh, of their addiction. And she just represents us all. Um, I thought about I thought, it's like so much. I don't even know where to begin. That's right. how that's how raw I am still from that experience. That experience changed my life. That experience changed my life as a filmmaker. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I get emotional talking about it. No, I I, I hear you. Um, when something like reaches down to the depths of your soul, like I I just bought my first piece of art recently. What'd you get? It was a photo of Billie Holiday. Oh, uh, backstage at the Hollywood Bowl that the okay. famous jazz photographer Herman Leonard took. Uh huh. So beautiful. She has this beautiful white dress on and she looks so glamorous. And I remember like when I finished watching that, the movie, I just looked at that picture and I was thinking, God, what was going on behind it all? You know? And so it, it just may had made, and I went back and started looking at all these other photos and thinking and just, just feeling what this woman yeah. like was dealing with and going through. And I think I've said this to you before, but being so, excuse my language, fucking powerful and not even realizing how much power she had. Yeah. That the world around her wanted her stopped. And she didn't even realize the womanhood she walked in and the power yeah. she really had. Like it. Yeah. What, that's, all and, that. that's all that. It's crazy. Um, why was it? Why did that make you so emotional when you just now? It captured you, what I was trying to talk about. What I was trying to, uh, what Susan Laurie Parks wrote 
what, what we're trying to direct, what I was trying to direct, and what my actors, what, what Andrew does sublimely, and what every actor did there on that thing. They gave me their soul. In a way, I don't know, I haven't experienced that before. Andrew Day could be your Halle Berry this year. She, I don't I mean, I'm, I've run out of accolades for what I feel like she did on that screen with Billie Holiday. She crossed over. Yeah. Sure. I don't know how she's come back because I, I didn't, I mean, I just don't know. And it wasn't just, yeah, it is a lot of her, but Rob Morgan, all of those black men that came in there and did their thing that surrounded her with the, with the support. Mm -hmm. We were really supportive. Every, no studio wanted to do this movie. And so it was great to have Jordan Fudge, our black man, produce us to give me the money to do this, to make sure that their hair was right, that the fashion was right, that I was able to get a couple of great moves cinematically, get a couple of moves in there to make you feel like we were in the period. Mm -hmm. um, and that we were able to get Andrew with a great acting coach uh, and a vocal coach. We had great music for that, phenomenal music for that to really transport us back into a time where that my mom, my mom who sees the film gets, it's hard to please her. That one hasn't been pleased since the butler. I don't think she's like anything else but the butler. <laughs> <laughs> that one? Don't watch Paper Boy. Go. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, she, this one right here, Nichelle, she is, uh, she, she said, she's so proud of me. And so I, I, for her, I don't have to do another movie. I just think that, I just think that um, it just speaks a lot about to my sobriety too, you know, about and understanding what her walk was. I don't understand how she was able to, I don't know how she was able to, uh, you know, for me, I have a group of support, a support yeah. team that I have, you know, that really make it easy for me. It's a daily struggle. It's a daily struggle that people are embarrassed to talk about. I have no shame in my game. If I'm not telling you that I'm not an addict, then I'm lying to you, you know? And so it's a daily thing. And um, she didn't have that. She had a group of enablers who I really believed loved her. But yeah, she had, she had no one to hold her accountable. And the government was still planting drugs on her through them, to, to them parasite boyfriends, managers that yes. she was dating. She was set up to lose, I think. Well, you know, I, I'm surprised that she was able to do the work that she was able to, to do. You know, when you think about going into coming from a, a brothel. To be that broken and be that brilliant at the same time is awe-inspiring. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And like you said, shouts to Rob Morgan, who, you know, jumped out at, uh, of the screen at me on, in Just Mercy. And like here, I mean. Yes, he, Rob. I just love yeah. the support that we have. We have an incredible, incredible cast. Um, mm -hmm that I'm really, really proud of. I think it's the, I think it's the, I think it's a badass cast. And um, I think they're, and Natasha Leone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just love that you were telling this tale of kind of like this woman who was, you know, broken in so many ways and broken down by society in so many ways, but lifted up and exalted um, as well. Um, I love that you shot every bit of this glamorous even when she was at her most unglamorous like there was still this air of beauty and glamour to every single frame and I just thought it was beautiful I thought it was beautiful can I even that. ask you we don't get that we don't get no. that no we don't get it no chance. and back in those days in that era black folks was fried died and laid to the side honey <laughs> you know who did that Charles Charles Gregory Gosh, if anybody gets accolades for this film, I really hope Charles Gregory gets it because um, he did every wig. Mm. He died of COVID. He died of COVID. And um, he's just, he's brilliant. And he did every wig, he did every hairstyle. And he would, I go, I go, uh, I'd never worked with him before. I was blown away by 
his understanding of black hair. I've been so, you know, like, you know, if you, over the years, it's really hard to find great black uh, hairdressers that yeah. understand the art of black women's and men's hair. It is so hard. Me too. A lot of black people don't know what they're doing, Me okay? Too. <laughs> when you find somebody that really, like, you know, and I go, well, what? I said, how are you gonna fix her hair? He said, I got the, I got the grease. I said, the grease? What does that mean? <laughs> So what? He said, "I got the grease, Daddy. Daddy, I got the grease." And he would go put the and boom, and it would be done. Would be yeah. Done. Can I even ask you? Can you even wrap your brain around because you're still in the throes of Billie Holiday? What's next? Where do we go um, now? I'm, I'm just trying to. Because we're on this stuff. ride with you, Lee. I We're know. on this ride. I We're just trying to figure out where the next stop is. And I know you are, Michelle. I know y'all are. Uh, I know one thing. I ain't going to be this long coming back to doing a movie. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it to myself because uh, I love it. I love I love what I do. And I, and I, and I know that um, 10 years is too long to be without being behind the camera yep. and working in a playground. It's like going to, it's like playing, it's like playing in a playground. So it's not going to be, I don't know what it is. Maybe a horror movie. Maybe because I don't think we've seen a real horror movie. Not that Jordan Peele's wasn't brilliant, but that was more of a satire and a look at the world. But I'm talking about like a black exorcist that scared the shit out of you to make you run out of the house like you did with the exorcist or, or Rosemary's Baby, something like that, that really gets into your soul. Maybe something like that. Maybe a, a comedy. What does a Lee Daniels comedy really look like? Because I, I, you know, that'd be that like, be what does really a Lee Daniels comedy look like? That would be amazing. <laughs> humor. You got a little bit of a warped sense of humor there, fellas. So I would <laughs> like to see that come out. <laughs> uh, or I don't know, a super, what does a superhero movie look like of mine? Yeah. Don't know. The possibility. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not letting this amount of time go by. I love it. Well, listen, on behalf of the foundation and myself, because I've had a blast talking to you today, I just want to thank you. Thank you for all of your contributions to the art. Thank you for blessing all of us with your creative genius. And I can't wait to see where we go from here. You know, um, audiences and actors alike all say we appreciate you, Lee. 